मीडिया हाउसेस कैन प्ले हवक विद द एग्जिट पोल फेक न्यूज डीप फेक्स दिस विल बी द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज बिफोर द इलेक्शन कमीशन बिकॉज ड्यूरिंग दैट इलेक्शन पीरियड द जुडिस्टिक्शन ऑफ ऑल द कोर्ट्स इज बार्ड नॉट इवन सुप्रीम कोर्ट कैन इंटरफेयर इलेक्शन कमीशन इज ऑलवेज fair because election commissions every decision goes up to the supreme court so they just cannot afford to yield under any pressure whenever there is a challenge before the election commission in conduct of free and fair elections chief election commission is not supposed to pray to the god to give powers to deal with that challenge whatever he does within the existing legal framework hmm. that becomes the law britishers while leaving they said that you are doomed hmm. but we proved them wrong electoral roll was finished in time from 4 crore to 17 crore in our country a legislator starts his or her career by submitting a lie to the election commission in the form of expenditure statement one thing which has made booth capturing redundant it mm. can't happen with evm mm. because every vote will take 20 seconds whereas with the ballot you can just take the booklet thak 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 and putting in the ballot box it is not really well founded that voter buying will succeed our voter is mature it is recognized world over that election commission of india they deliver free fair and credible election without succumbing to any kind of pressure namaste jai hind welcome to another edition of ani podcast with smita prakash This episode is being filmed in the city of Bhopal which is the capital of the state of Madhya Pradesh. The state goes to polls this year a few months before the general elections of 2024. Now while all TV channels will be showing you debates and campaigning wall to wall there is actually talk about how elections are conducted in India. While globally people are amazed about what a mammoth task it is to conduct elections in a country with a population of 1.4 billion people and that we conduct it fair and square there are also some troubling aspects to elections in India some loopholes that political parties exploit such as the use of money power My guest today is a person who has served as the 22nd Chief Election Commissioner of India and is an IAS officer from the Madhya Pradesh cadre. The conversation would be about the role of the Election Commission of India. Mr O P Rawat in his tenure as Election Commissioner has monitored General Assembly elections in 14 Indian states. Mr Rawat thank you so much for being part of the podcast. Um Madhya Pradesh goes to polls this year. a few months before uh, the general election so i will speak to you about madhya pradesh too but i want to begin with uh, talking about west bengal uh, panchayat elections many of us were uh, shocked to see the visuals and everybody wonders uh, why is it that uh, electronic voting machines evms are not used for panchayat elections that would have ensured free and fair elections or at least in some manner we just saw the conclusion of the panchayat elections in west bengal and the bizarre visuals of people stealing ballot boxes 52 people died repolling ordered in 600 booths it's a throwback to the era of booth capturing and bogus voting of 30 years back why is it that electronic voting machines are not used in panchayat elections thanks for calling me uh, west bengal uh, is not uh, very peculiar about uh, panchayat elections being violent panchayat elections are local elections where stakes are very high and people fight it tooth and nail therefore and uh, recently the money given to panchayats for development works has grown multifold you know from just about 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs it is now 5 crores 10 crores and then benefits the benefit schemes uh, panchayat has to this decide as to who will be the beneficiary of these schemes therefore stakes become very high and they really fight tooth and nail so violence is everywhere even in madhya pradesh if you see panchayat elections there are deaths there are skirmishes there are uh, other events only thing is that evms earlier these used to be uh, given to state election commissions by election commission of india but when we found that anything going wrong there because of the administrative lapses was being projected against the evm that evm is not reliable it can be tempered so election commission decided no we will not allow this to happen because their uh, administrative system is not uh, in fact uh, 
taking care of all the aspects of uh, EVM security. So that's why they are uh, So doing. why can't central forces be used for, uh, because central forces are in charge of uh, maintaining law and order when assembly elections and central elections are held. Why can't central forces be deployed for urban uh, local body elections or panchayat elections? which is the rural election. Yes, certainly they should be employed. Hmm. But uh, what happens that uh, central forces, if any state requisitions, they have to make payment for it, which is huge. Hmm. And uh, state governments may not be able to afford. And therefore, they don't uh, call central forces to begin with. Okay. But when High Court of West Bengal ordered hmm. that you call so many companies of uh, central forces, then a state election commission requisition because uh, he was backed by the High Court order hmm. that a state government will, in, will have to pay. Hmm. Uh, that is what happens. Otherwise, if a state government is ready to pay and uh, state election commissioners are empowered enough, like Election Commission of India, then they will always seek central forces and deploy as election commission does it right uh, so what is the solution to uh, fake voting and voter intimidation not just for panchayat i'm talking about general elections about uh, state elections because we've seen that uh, there is voter intimidation which happens so what is the solution to that actually in uh, lok sabha and uh, assembly elections uh, these things uh, are uh, gone, in fact. Very, very uh, rare incidents of intimidation or uh, fake voting. Because EVM and VVPET combined and uh, voter recognition uh, systems mm. put in place. Mm. In fact, now, after the amendment to the law, uh, even biometrics are available to election commission voluntary linking of uh, Aadhaar with the voter ID. In Madhya Pradesh, a little more than 5 crore voters are there and 4.90 voters have already linked voluntarily. So that kind of uh, identification will be possible. And uh, that is why Election Commission demonstrated remote voting machine that even the migrant workers who go temporarily from their uh, homes to Punjab, Haryana or other places for seasonal work they can be afforded to vote from there itself. How does that happen? This remote voting machine they have devised, uh -huh. it can carry multiple constituencies' uh, data and ballot ballots. So it's the machine is sent, or yes. how does it work? The ma there's a uh, physical machine which yeah. is sent to various states. Yeah, yeah, depending on registration, like mm. all those people mm. who are working temporarily outside their polling station area, mm. they have to inform the returning officer that they will be in this area mm. during polling. Okay. And therefore, they should be provided opportunity to vote from there. Mm. So, returning officer will have the data as to how many voters are where. And then the feasibility for setting up a polling station there worked out. A voting machine will be put there. Suppose there are uh, 20 constituencies uh, voters there. So 20 constituencies data will be put in that machine and it, it can be uh, sent there with the parties requested to provide their polling agents and biometrics for recognition or identification of the voters. Because the, a lot of misuse happens. You see, what happens is, uh, I'll tell you what I have heard, is that, uh, for example, if uh, there are some, say, 10,000 migrant workers from X state which goes to polls, they are working as laborers, they are working as, you know, cooks, taxi drivers or whatever in uh, Mumbai or Delhi or something like that. The political parties in that state know that these people are working there. And then what happens is, they tell them, here, is what we'll give you. We'll give you train ticket to go back to your village and cast a vote and we give you 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees extra. So the cost for a political party is about 5000 to 6000 for a vote because that person has now got leave from his boss from his to go back home. He gets free going back to the village, meets with his family and uh, obviously the loyalty is towards the person who has given uh, the ticket and a little bit of kharcha ka paisa. That doesn't work because in fact I will uh, tell you first hand incident which I saw, money was being distributed in a southern state and our flying squad was seizing it because they caught it and they were seizing the money and the illiterate laborer working there who was from north, 
was shouting at them why are you seizing do you think that we vote for these people who give us cash mm. no we just take this cash to our family for some enjoyment once in 5 years mm-hmm. we vote according to our own choice we never vote for those people who uh, give us liquor or who give us cash illiterate person talking like this i was really uh, encouraged that yes our voter has matured okay yeah. so there is there is no sense of loyalty to the person absolutely who has no. given absolutely no because there is no means that uh, that person will be able to verify uh-huh. can't correct correct you spoke about the uh, vv pat machines which is the voter verifiable paper audit trail ngos and political parties have been demanding for long that voter verifiable paper audit trail vv pat be used in a transparent manner the ec did not follow standard operating procedures which is the model code of conduct that the panel had framed for itself which required field officers to identify defects and any faults to be identified within 7 days the media reports say that ec itself noted that over 3 lakh machines were defective uh, i don't think this happens because you know election commission has uh, already decided that 100% polling stations will be covered with the uh, vv pat hmm. and uh, everywhere it is deployed and whatever defects or defective vv, VV pats are uh, sort of discovered they are immediately replaced because the election commission has surplus and every zonal officer who is in charge of say 10 polling stations carries uh, spare vv pads spare evm ballot units uh, control unit everything to replace it immediately mm-hmm. even the polling parties at some places they are given spares to uh, uh, replace the defective units so i don't think that uh, it may be happening anywhere so if vv pat machines are there in surplus they could have been used uh, during the panchayat elections It's after all a vv pat no uh, i already cl- clarified that uh, everything can be used there hmm. but the administrative regimen the enforcement hmm. uh, those kind of things not being as uh, strict hmm. and as rigid as election commission enforces like this uh, they have created manuals they have created uh, three uh, level training they have the webcasting every polling station you can s- uh, sit in delhi election commission and see how the polling process is going on hmm. all those things are there whereas the state election commission maybe because of lack of uh, adequate resources uh, or deliberate or for all that maybe all maybe know. maybe deliberate yeah. uh, that is why election commission thought no we will not share because uh, it's a very very it's like you know antibiotic kind of thing hmm. if somebody misuses and doesn't use the full course the bacteria develops the resistance <laughs> and, and then you know super bug is created same thing you have got evm third generation now after so many years and vv pet now if something goes wrong because yeah. of the state election it uh, causes a uh, slur in that thing then okay we have to go back to the ballot which will uh, be so cumbersome Oh you are talking about paper ballot then. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. So you live in uh, Madhya Pradesh and this state goes to polls in 2023. Um is you were saying that voter intimidation happens uh, even in uh, rural areas as far as panchayat elections and all are concerned because the stakes are so high. So in 2023 what is the challenge before the administration that voter intimidation shouldn't happen because the stakes are high here too you know you have the BJP which is sitting in power for so many years and the congress itching to get to uh, power especially after you know Karnataka elections they are on a high and they feel that it's about time that Uh, you know the bjp is uprooted in madhya pradesh so tell me in areas where um, where tribal populations live uh, is there enough um, is there enough security is there enough uh, awareness that they should not be they, they needn't be intimidated yeah election commission uh, runs a flagship program called sweep hmm. systematic voter education and electoral participation this program has really revolutionized voter education and uh, therefore participation especially of women hmm. has gone up like anything uh, voter intimidation can just not take place anywhere because uh, election commission has put in place uh, this closed circuit tv webcasting Uh, c- uh central police force at every polling station they have uh, a manual you know risk mitigation manual 
where previous experience says that these areas like tribal areas or naxal areas mm. these areas are vulnerable for this kind of uh, violence or intimidation or anything special arrangements are made there special pickets are put there uh, flying squads and surveillance teams are put there so that can't really happen with the state uh, assembly election or lok sabha election hmm. under the administrative arrangement of uh, election commission then we have police observer police observer goes around the state uh, seeing the police arrangements and how are they working only thing is that everybody's capability of resisting a pressure is different hmm. and that's why when i joined election commission and first election in bihar uh, took place after election was over which year was this this was 2015 mm. and uh, no violent incident absolutely no even then i found the statistics that 17 of our polling personnel died how so did that happen that is the thing which uh, tells a lot that these were the people who resisted every kind of pressure okay people entering or trying to course in something which they didn't like so they did, they want buzz and they had cardiac arrest or they had some uh, multi organ failure or something like that and they died whereas there may have been cases where people uh, were on duty compromised hmm. so those things happen in a covert kind of manner but not visible because re- recording is going on web camera is uh, alive but you've so got millions of people uh, who've been deployed i mean in in this country with 1.4 billion population the world over we are uh, you know we everybody says oh fantastic the way election commission of india conducts elections but millions of people are deployed and you, as you yourself said it's not possible to monitor the pressures that your workers your officers uh come under so can you give me some examples of how it happened one you said was the bihar uh, incident mm-hmm. where it's not visible as such as to how uh, they died in uh, in the call of duty no, cause of death was known yeah. because we did and then we increased the amount of uh, uh, mm-hmm. this uh, insurance mm-hmm. uh, earlier it used to be just uh, 7 lakhs mm-hmm. but anybody dying on poll duty we increased it to 20 lakhs after bihar election itself mm-hmm. because we realized that uh, when these people resist the pressure and die because of the stress we must take care of them uh, but one incident i'll tell you one very remote polling station in very remote state uh, i was just scrolling because uh, we have arrangement of scrolling the polling stations mm. uh, to see the web uh, feed mm. so just scrolling and then one polling station i found that one tall person was standing and uh, because of him whole polling party was standing so much respect to him oh my god uh, i immediately uh. stopped and saw that uh, mm. voter was coming this fellow would take the voter get him inked and then take him to the booth for a stamping or put pressing the evm button but he won't allow him to enter and press he would press himself ah and second voter came same thing happened and no action because C- the central reserve police force they are always outside our instructions are very clear they must not enter unless called for okay. by the presiding officer okay so uh, nobody can interfere inside what is happening i rang up the dg police there and asked that this polling station you uh, send reinforcement and see what is happening and i watched that in just 7 minutes reinforcement came that fellow was arrested and normal polling started okay. so these things happen like all polling agents ka- congress bjp local regional parties all polling agents were standing in respect to him oh. so powerful person that bahubali kinds and and president uh, presiding officer polling officer everyone was standing mm-hmm. so even these things happen but our arrangements are so good that on web camera if you are watchful and this web camera is available to district magistrate to returning officer mm. to election commission ceo at all levels i remember so long long ago uh, there was this one incident where uh, sonia gandhi was casting her vote and uh, rajesh khanna was the candidate he went inside and uh, the cameras were on and he was pointing she couldn't find you know that was a time when there were these 
ballot papers oh, and okay. not electronic voting machine mm-hmm. and he was the candidate and he pointed and there was a case on him because mm-hmm. he's not as a candidate supposed to point and the poor mm-hmm. man was just showing because there was the uh, symbol right yeah, yeah. that's how people would uh, because mm-hmm. that's another thing that uh, you know um, many countries they ask why why is there a symbol because of our uh, literacy issue yeah, so yeah. some people who cannot read the name of the candidate will go with the symbol, symbol and yeah. vote so i guess because in those days there used to be so many names yeah. you know you had to fold the ballot paper thrice over yes, right. and then insert it so itna lamba sa tha mm-hmm. and she couldn't find the name and he was pointing and there was a case done on him so these are very very tight controls which are in place right uh, even in evms hmm. there may be 60 candidates yeah so many names now it may be difficult for uh, ordinary voter hmm. to find uh, a voter uh, and candidate of his or her choice yeah so that happens right uh, uh, you were talking about uh, you know uh, uh, these bahubalis who come in uh, and they stand out there the fear of politicization of either the polling agents or the uh, the polling officers is that the also a uh, an issue so when you for example a polling officer could be a teacher you know they could be teachers who go everywhere now they also come from society only they could be influenced too isn't it right. by uh, so what about that pressures that they could come under election commission has got a very very complex system of allocating the people hmm. for a polling party like they will have first randomization second randomization what is randomization randomization means people's name who are available for duty in huh. a particular uh, district will be first randomized as to who will go to which constituency okay second second randomization in the constituency who will go to which zone zone and third and final randomization in that zone which polling station and third one is done on the last day so that nobody knows where that person is going So first thing ah. second nobody knows who will be in the team so many different people one will be central government one will be teacher one will be uh, another uh, mechanical worker from somewhere total different mix they cannot have meeting of minds or they cannot be friendly to each other or anything that is decided on the last day hmm. when they are going with the electronic voting machine to the polling station okay. that kind of precaution is taken and they can't carry cell phones they can't give information how does that work no, the secrecy carry. issue they can carry in the sense phone. that inside the polling station when they are inside they can't uh, they can't carry they can't give information about who's come in who's voted and things like that, that they right? can't can't do because so in the, inside some, the polling can you tell me the rules and regulations that they have to follow yeah they have their manuals presiding officers manual polling officers manual and all the rules and regulations are uh, briefly given there the, which they have to follow first thing is that uh, they have to f- uh, follow the orders of the presiding officer presiding officer is in charge the captain of the team second all the polling agents have to be placed at a place so that they can see voters face very clearly and can raise an objection that this person is not that name which is attached to him uh, he is a fake voter something like that so even for polling agents they have to m- make those arrangements and they have to ensure that everyone is uh, inked before going to the booth and nobody else goes to the booth for pressing the button hmm. and he is also briefed that you should press the button and stay there till you hear the beep, beep. yeah because only then the voting process is complete the impartiality and integrity of the entire system, system. is yeah. based on that one polling officer yeah. who's on duty there yeah right hmm. and that is one thing which has really uh, made booth capturing uh, use uh, redundant it hmm. can't happen with evm hmm. because every vote will take 20 seconds hmm. loading the ballot pressing the button seeing the bb pet slip for 7 seconds and then finally beep all those things told take 20 seconds so if you have captured a booth and you want 1000 vote to be cast on the evm you will have to be there for 20000 seconds hmm. which is huge more than 6 hours whereas with the ballot you can just take the um, booklet thak 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 and another person is just folding and putting in the ballot box so in just 20 minutes to 30 minutes you can stuff those 1000 ballots 
when you joined uh, the election commission uh, at that time these things were rampant probably so if you could tell me uh, about what uh, give me a little bit about history because our young viewers have probably not even seen uh, that era you know of uh, booth capturing and how the pressures on the election commission to conduct free and fair polls and what happened and the role of mr sheshan everybody remembers him as the strictest and most effective election commissioner of those times mm -hmm. and how he changed the way elections were conducted in india so give me a little history and then about mr sheshan okay uh, first of all uh, when we took uh, for first election in 5152 no law was there even constitution came into force on 26 january 1950 whereas the preparation for first election started in 48 and time limit was given that you have to conduct this election by 51 and or 52 beginning there were partitions lakhs of people from uh, west pakistan east pakistan had migrated and come to india they were living in refugee camps they had no addresses no, only numbers and that also in a flux suppose somebody gets a house allotted goes there so change immediately mm -hmm. and then under government of india act 1935 limited voting was there britishers did not give universal suffrage to indians also in their country also they didn't give you know, uh, franchise to women till 1920s here also no franchise to women no franchise to poor only 4 crores voters were there undivided india whereas for first election when we prepared the electoral roll with all those difficulties of partition and refugees uh, we had 17 crore voters and universal adult Suffice. franchise yeah. right yeah. we brought this free in the sense that no caste no nothing. religion no sex Everyone. no gender yes. nothing was included everybody could vote freely yes. Yes. in that first election yeah. isn't that a wonderful thing that yeah. happened in fact britishers while leaving they said that you are doomed universal suffrage will uh, make you uh, impossible to conduct this election mm -hmm. but we proved them wrong electoral roll was finished in time 17 crore from 4 crore to 17 crore and uh, ballot boxes multiple ballot boxes because literacy was very low 6% for women and 12% overall mm. so if there are 10 candidates polling party had to carry 10 ballot boxes for one for each candidate oh goodness yeah okay yeah so okay. that kind of arrangement had to be made and we had no manufacturer for ballot box so the ballot boxes had the name of a candidate name symbol ha huh. yeah everything so jawala nehru had one box box and people went and voted for in that just box just a slip was given to Haan. voters no ballot or other thing Haan. just a slip put that slip wherever you put it becomes a vote for that person okay you don't have to mark or you don't have to do anything just uh, and that slip. was because of why because of illiteracy? literacy illiteracy because they were uh, okay. the britishers never took care of literacy the tasveer lagayi thi unhone how did people know that this is nehru the tasveer bhi lagayi naam bhi likha chinh bhi laga chunav ah, chinh bhi laga okay. so many things even after that there are anecdotes huh? one book we brought out in election commission that says ki one uh, elector took the slip because he felt ki pata nahi ye do belt ki jodi ko jayega ki nahi huh? so he took the slip out huh? outside there was a bullock cart so he put that slip near the bullocks <laughs> <laughs> even huh? those things happen thinking ki congress ko vote jayega usko dena hai humko to yahan to dono bell hai isko de dete hain like that so those okay. things happen hmm. uh, with that uh, things changed uh, after second election hmm. till second election this multiple ballot box were there hmm. then ballot came so who were the officers uh, in the first second third fourth election were they part of the civil service or indian new matlab it was still the imperial civil service which continued ics officers who yeah, were there right yeah, yeah. and then it was the indian administrative service how was it uh, yeah. who was uh, it? mostly chief election commissioner because there used to be only one hmm. uh, chief election commissioner uh, in the beginning hmm. only after mr sessions that went hmm. that uh, three member commission came in right right yeah so uh, they were all uh, retired civil servants ab ye aise kaan pakad ke session bolenge <laughs> <laughs> i would want to know about mr sheshan yeah, also yeah. you know so, he's a legendary uh, officer yeah. uh, and uh, 
I remember, uh, you know, when uh, we were new journalists and uh, one of my uh, colleagues was to, you know, interview Mr. Sheshan. He was in Chennai at that time. And she ca called him up and said that uh, I am whatever Devanshi or whatever her name was. I don't remember. She said, I'm Devanshi uh, from ANI. Uh, and uh, uh, can I speak to you, sir? So she, he first thing he asked her was, you are Devanshi what? Are you a reporter? Are you a peon? Are you a clerk? Are you a cameraman? Are you... <laughs> <laughs> so I, he, and you know, like going and meeting him means you prepared well, yeah. you did all yours. So tell me about Mr. Sheshan and what, what was he like as, as an election commissioner? He was a very thorough person. Uh, he had a good administrative experience as defense secretary and cabinet secretary. And he earned a reputation which was really scary for ordinary people. <laughs> And uh, by that time, uh, elections also had become very contentious. Mm -hmm. The first four general elections were not contentious. Generally, Congress won without any difficulty. And uh, there was hardly any uh, mm -hmm. contention anywhere. Right. Uh, no stressful working or anything. But uh, slowly, ad emergence of uh, other political outfits, Priza Socialist Past Party, SSP, all kinds of things, Jansang, they came and elections became contentious. And mm. therefore, uh, by that time, this uh, money mm. and uh, ensuring that vote comes to you, mm. that was very easy because uh, ballot paper being counted polling station wise. Mm. So people will get the data, will know I had paid to 700 people. I got only 200 votes, so this village we will have to penalize. Those oh. things, yeah, those things started happening. In the 70s? In or the earlier? Eight, 80s, 80s, 80s and 90s. Hmm. And Mr. Session joined 1990 as hmm. election, uh, chief election commissioner. Hmm. So what he devised, he said, no, we will not count polling station wise. We will first uh, open the ballot boxes of uh, 14 polling stations because 14 tables were there and then mix them hmm. after counting the numbers are okay we'll mix them without seeing who has got what then we will make packets of 25 ballots after mixing 25 ballots in one okay. this thing and again mix hmm. and then distribute to each table hmm. uh, equitably so that the counting takes place in uh, uniform time hmm. and then counting results will be uh, declared for 14 polling stations together. No separate thing. Mm. But this process took a lot of time and in fact I was at that time uh, I was a collector and I realized that two, three days counting mm. was going on and nobody could go out. We had to make arrangement for food. We had to make arrangement for rest mm. for you know all kinds of things. So it was okay. very cumbersome. But uh, foolproof that nobody could know as to where the, that fellow has given money and uh, how uh, voting took place. Okay. Those kind of things uh, he huh. brought in. Huh. Then he brought in all uh, you know stiff measures against the Iran political political people. Like when they come for uh, filing nomination, huge. Uh, cavalcade and crowd and all those people getting into the returning officer's room and shouting and doing all kinds of things. He said, nothing doing. Only two persons can go for filing the nomination. Candidate and one assistant, whatever assistant he wants or she but wants. that doesn't happen now. Now there's yeah. a full drama all over again. Uh, even now the instructions are same that not more than two people can enter the returning officer's room but outside also in the premises the instructions are very clear and at times uh, district magistrate can issue orders that no procession for nomination even those things are uh, also th I've seen that the officer doesn't get up from the chair Jab wo dete hai, uh, she or he is sitting and it's given there is and then there's some protocol, strict protocol, I guess, that they don't stand and there's no, you know, even in the photographs and things like that, there are some officers who just like maintain it very strictly, the rules and regulations. Yeah, that's very true because you are the referee. 
right. and and you have to show impartiality yeah. suppose a pm is a candidate in your uh, huh. uh, constituency and if you keep uh, standing in front of him yeah. then other opposition candidate will feel uh, uh, slighted intimidated yeah, that yeah, yeah that yeah you're already uh, prejudicial already surrendering and already you know yeah i can imagine so, so uh, in your experience which was the most difficult election uh, that you uh, you oversaw uh, or you were part of yeah elections are generally uh, difficult if you do not plan hmm. uh, beforehand hmm. if you don't cater to all kinds of challenges hmm. uh, it happens Uh, but uh, since i joined in, uh, in 2015 and first election which was the most challenging because bihar had a history mm. of violence and all kinds of uh, wrong things happening uh, with the new technology new systems of webcasting video closed circuit tv surveillance uh, flying squad uh, and uh, naxal area picketing all those things we found that elections were most peaceful only thing the brunt was uh, taken by the polling uh, parties mm. like i said 17 people died in a very peaceful election yeah. this was because they were under stress mm. some kind of stress was there working on them so that happened but after that we never found that there was any uh, problem in any election so money power the use of money power is something which disturbs most citizens recently the expenditure limit for candidates for lok sabha constituencies was increased from 54 lakhs to rupees 70 lakhs depending on states and then 70 lakhs to 95 lakhs by the election commission of india further the spending limit for assembly constituencies was hiked from rupees 20 lakhs to 28 lakhs rupees 40 lakhs in some states but if you see the rallies the vehicles the large tents the food and drinks the hotels that are booked the advertisements it's clearly visible on tv channels these limits are just on paper so how is one supposed to control this you are very correct in fact one of our former prime minister mr atal bihari bajpay said this mm. that in our country a legislator starts his or her career by submitting a lie to the election commission in the form of expenditure statement this is what he said yeah. so starting career with submitting a uh, wrong or uh, yeah. not correct the reason being that there is a ceiling on candidates expenditure but there is no ceiling on political parties expenditure and both gets mixed uh, candidate ensures that wherever his name or uh, vote for him is involved mm. he will show expenditure in his account but wherever it is not involved his name is not coming then political party expenditure a political party can spend 10 crores in one constituency and that is why the impression created because common man doesn't distinguish between two expenditure correct that this is uh, candidates expenditure this is political parties expenditure yeah. so he gets confused he says ki 95 lakhs is the ceiling but uh, 20 crores have been spent this is what happens and therefore election commission has been time and again telling the government that please put a ceiling on political party expenditure also they've even gone to the supreme court yeah, to say that they are seriously concerned yeah, about this then. and in fact even if you see internationally because uh, our elections are considered very free fair and credible mm. worldwide but then harvard uh, university set up one time series uh, data in the name of electoral integrity project where uh, india comes almost near the top but for two reasons one is uh, money campaign finance they say that here you score only about 33 marks out of 100 all other you score 70 plus but in money management or campaign finance management just 33 and second is media issues that media people are misusing they they in fact uh, many a times uh, candid- candidates complain that i am being criticized in this particular uh, platform every day because i have not paid whatever they ask for okay they they had put a price tag if you give this much there will be favorable if you give this much we will be neutral 
if you don't give anything we will bang you every day and uh, this will uh, jeopardize your chances so and social media now hmm. now ai ai can make donald trump singing a bhojpuri song anybody drawing a uh, women's molestation scene from a film or from a video and put a candidate's uh, image instead of the person involved there and uh, throw this in the social media election period is very limited you know just about 4 to 6 weeks and within that period it will be difficult to verify as to who created this uh, deep fake video how it has been circulated and how to catch them so that uh, character assassination of that particular candidate can be prevented those things are very very difficult so those are the second issue where we score just about 34 out of 100 and because of those two things we are on moderate electoral integrity whereas most western countries european and american countries they are in very high integrity but these deep fakes were used even in that hillary clinton versus trump uh, election uh deep fakes were used even there so it's not as if their election has been i'm i'm not defending the indian election or the indian media but i'm talking about just the numbering system uh that is done even american elections deep fakes were used uh, uh, in that true, very true you know? in fact they don't compare favorably with us hmm. like when i went to mm, uh, give a talk at harvard uh i was asked by professors there that how come you have got a digital electoral roll with photo id you know our electoral roll has photo it is digital it has a facility that if you want to change your vote from one constituency to other because you have trans- got transferred you can sit at home on your own computer or laptop or uh, ipad you can go to your page by putting your uh, voter id number uh, then ask for editing cap- capability Uh, otp will come to your uh, mobile uh, put the otp editing will be enabled you change your address and then submit you will get a receipt that your uh, application has been received a booth level officer will verify on the ground and within 15 days your name will be transferred from this constituency to the new constituency mm. and after 15 days you will get a notification that now you have done there you are your voter there those kind of facilities are there where us electoral law doesn't have we have only hard copies right. we we don't have this uh, digital or digital. photo nothing so where the digital world has uh, has brought about efficiency in the electoral system yeah. but also the dangers which you're talking about the social media ai uh, thing and the disinformation and misinformation uh, this is something that we are looking at uh, or we are looking at it happening in the 2023 uh elections in the states which is madhya pradesh chatisgarh rajasthan the main three then there's telangana also yeah. and uh, mizoram. mizoram and then we are looking at 2024 do you think that uh, there can be anything done to ensure that you know that the dangers of this social media and ai uh disinformation and misinformation doesn't jeopardize these elections yeah election commission started taking steps to prevent uh, these kind of risks right in the year 2017 uh all the cyber uh, attacks on electoral roll system uh we put a pdf image of the electoral roll in the public domain mm. no direct uh, digital edition anywhere first we made it into a pdf then we took an image mm. photo so that you cannot manipulate it any way, any uh, any manner those kind of steps have been taken by election commission the, all the social media platform heads were called their commitment was taken that any thing wrong seen by our election commission staff anywhere pointed out to you you will immediately take action to verify and remove that content within 24 hours and in case you fail to do that you will be mm, 
proceeded against by the election commission means election commission can put a ban on that platform to function in that particular area so all those steps were taken starting 2017 even for ai they are on it and they are uh, doing okay. it yeah tell me what is the solution for media as media is it self regulatory which should happen or uh, is it media needs to be uh, purged of these elements the corruption that has occurred with the media also uh, it's a very difficult question mm. uh, earl- earlier there were cases like when 48 hours before the polling concludes there is a silence period mm. when nothing of electioneering or asking for vote or anything can be uh, propagated or campaign like that uh, during that period Uh, one media house put something on digital newspaper hmm. and uh, mm, that was caught because the, the other party complained and uh, that was caught and at 2 o'clock uh, in the night the owner of that media house was arrested hmm. so but the damage is done right no it was I mean, just you arrest the person uh, concerned but once it's come on digital it you i mean millions have already read it actually that was uh, night time because okay. it was uh, uploaded at 10:40 in mm. the night mm. and 2:30 the person was arrested and the whole thing was uh, brought down from the platform nothing was there so only during that period whosoever has seen might have uh, seen but otherwise not much of damage was done and even the party who was complaining even they were satisfied that uh, prompt and quick action was taken and they were very happy with that so election commission has uh, wherewithal they have all these uh, systems in place to cope with all the emerging threats hmm. and i am confident that there won't be any such issue i want to come to this thing about opinion polls and exit polls uh, exit polls are not allowed before x number of hours uh, after the polling last, the last, last phase. yeah so uh, polling begins in the morning at whatever 6 am or whatever it begins and then when the last poll is so wo extension hota rehta hai mm-hmm. because there are people who are standing in line so there's no time limit or the the time for the last poll to be ca- uh, last vote to be cast so when that last vote is cast only then an exit poll so tell me the difference between an opinion poll or the viewers <laughs> the opinion poll and an exit poll and why was this rule brought about that the exit poll should not be the results of the exit poll should not be put out till x time because exit poll is based on real time uh, voting experience of uh, voters uh, and these people sit outside the polling station or randomly selected and uh, take the um, uh, voting uh, hmm. pattern from there so mostly this is fairly accurate with an error percentage of just about 1 or 2% many times uh, whereas opinion poll is a survey survey done in an area uh, and uh, people are asked they may be telling something and voting differently there is there may not be any correlation with that that opinion poll uh, goes on whenever they want to do like even now opinion polls were published for madhya pradesh for chatisgarh correct yes uh, but exit polls are after the polling is over hmm. all phases hmm. and they can be telecast only when the last polling has completed and half an hour has gone the impact on polling is not there in an y- exit poll yes but on an in an opinion poll there can be uh, an impact right yeah there can be an impact because if you keep hearing oh the congress is losing oh the congress is losing in this area if r- repeated opinion polls show that sitting at home you think uh, why should i vote for the congress mera to vote waisi Uh, waste jayega so might as well vote for the bjp and vice versa if you go on saying are modi ji jeetne wale modi ji jeetne wale hain then you tend to think ke uh, kya fayda agar main congress ko de dungi to vote to modi ji jeetne wale hain to mera vote to waste ho jayega so this waste system is quite a bit and i think uh, political parties use that i saw this in the karnataka election also where uh, they a particular community said that uh, you know make sure that you vote to anybody who's not who has the capacity to beat the bjp 
our aim is to beat the bjp so make sure that the candidate you're voting even agar aapke samuday ke na ho aap unhe vote diye why this happens is because of this opinion polls a lot of the opinion polls show that that your vote is going to get scattered if you vote for this so sometimes good candidates don't get votes because of these opinion polls so what is one supposed to do for that like do you think it's justified that it's fine i don't think it works only one way hmm. it works m- in many ways hmm. like in madhya pradesh i have the experience that one political party uh, got a pol- opinion poll managed and uh, this was published just about uh, one month before the polling uh that they are getting uh, 39 out of 40 seats hmm. that is the opinion poll now what happened that according to you the voter may be saying ki theek hai this is going to happen but you know their own workers they felt that our party is winning so why should we go we go for picnic on that day <laughs> they went for picnic and you know they the got, committed voters didn't come they out they got then. 12 out of 40 ah in the result so things happen so complacency could come in it because can of come that. in come in yeah so right. it works many ways when opinion is not solid but you know media houses can play havoc with the exit poll like exit poll is banned that you cannot telecast or uh, mm. broadcast mm. but media houses tried to bring astrologers yes i have seen <laughs> that too they huh. brought astrologers and gave them feed of exit poll huh they wanted to prove one or two astrologers to be very accurate so gave them exit poll data and the eye was on those uh, astrologers that this much percentage of vote will be uh, to this party this much to them and this per- percentage of seat to them uh, and election commission made out that uh, this is uh, exit poll data and uh, arrests were made and this is stopped because this is something which could have really damaged the whole uh, thing right uh, irretrievably right. so. so electoral bonds ke bare mein batai because um, there are many politicians who say that this is corruption uh, because of electoral bonds one particular party gets uh, a lot of money from uh, from industrialists who tend to make obviously industry will want to give money to the party which has more chances of winning again i'm talking about opinion polls so opinion polls will show x party is going to win so obviously the electoral bonds go towards that party then so there's a lot of manipulation which happens electoral bonds were supposed to bring about transparency in the way electoral funding is done do you think it is uh, transparent actually money is uh, manifest in many ways like us system uh, which legalizes all kinds of donations and everything even they are struggling with money management like uh, political action committees pscs mm. they bring in lot of money oh, in yes. us elections the pacs are yeah. very very yes. money oriented yeah. yes yes so all those things happen mm. here also uh, mm. things are really uh, very complex uh, political parties used to complain senior leaders used to come and meet us uh, when i was there and they used to say nobody is giving money they mm. are saying that if we give money to you and you are going to lose uh, we will be hauled up by the winner so nobody is giving money now there has to be an arrangement that people don't come to know that who has given to whom if that is there only then we small parties uh, will have little hope of getting something so i think it's not a level playing field that yeah, means yeah money okay. so that is what i think politicians did it electoral okay. bond that uh, electoral bond will not be known huh. who has bought who has uh, given to whom and how much has given to so there are two uh, terms which i think need demystifying one is voter suppression how is it different from voter buying or is it different uh, actually these two are different things but objective is same where a particular polit- political outfit feels that these people vote for the opposition what they try to do suppression either they will put in number of applications when electoral roll is being revised that we have migrated from here so our name should be deleted 
whereas that poor voter doesn't know that on his behalf an application has been moved for deletion of vote. So much so that in Noida, one retired Indian Foreign Service officer, he found that his wife and ch uh, children, their vote remained intact uh, after one election, but his vote was uh, removed, hmm. deleted. So those kind of things they do, then they suppress in a manner that we will give you so much of money for your society or this problem, just don't go for vote. Hmm. And people agree. The villagers, they boycott uh, at the behest of some political party that uh, no water supply or no well, no hand pump. So you just boycott. Something instigates and this happens. So that village doesn't vote. Just one vote or two votes there and out of 1,000. That is suppression, very different. And mm -hmm. many times it is very difficult to trace the origin as to why this is happening and who is after it and uh, catching hold of them. Whereas voter wine, I told you that uh, politicians uh, and their uh, agents, they never feel comfortable uh, without doing anything, either distribution of cash or distribution of liquor, distribution of freebies, something like in one case, Puducherry, we found that uh, even, you know, sugar, 5 kg of sugar packets were distributed at the doorstep of every voter. Those kind of things. They feel that they have done this so the voter will be feeling obliged and will vote for them. Hmm. Whereas, I told you that example of a southern state that a literate worker was telling that let us have this money and um, enjoy with our family at least once in five years. We vote for uh, the person who is the best out of these people. Hmm. So those kind of things are there. So it is not really well founded that voter buying will succeed uh, in any manner. And I think we should go for it. Hmm. That uh, our voter is mature and we should uh, stand and sweep. Uh, that is systematic voter education, electoral participation, and things will work out. So you were deputed as an election ob observer to South Africa to oversee the first post-apartheid election. Uh, tell me about that uh, election when you went there. Yeah, that was a wonderful experience. And in fact, uh, I'm grateful to Mr. T. N. Session for that. Because 1994. Uh, yeah. Because uh, in one election, hmm. in the night I got a call from election commission. But mm. tomorrow you have to come to Delhi and fly from here to Dhanbad because observers from there have fled. The, some mm. bomb had uh, been planted in their uh, car and uh, they got uh, scared and they have fled. So we want an observer there. Mm. You have to go tomorrow. Mm. I went there, managed that election, whatever uh, grievances of political parties, candidates were there. And it went off peacefully and all right. And I feel that he uh, got impressed and he ensured that I go as a UN observer to South Africa. Hmm. So um, I went and... Did you have that in your... Pa did we have... Uh, in 1994, did we have official relations with South Africa or did, did you get a separate visa to go to South Africa? No, we had. You had the yeah. stamped uh, visa? Yeah, stamped visa. Okay. Hmm. So the things were very different there. Hmm. Like we uh, criticize our elections and our shortcomings. I found that after the material was uh, given to the political, uh, uh, these polling parties. What is material? Material means uh, ballot paper, okay. uh, mm. seals and all those mm. things, mm. ballot boxes, all those things mm. were given. And uh, they were sent to the polling station. It is done one day prior. Okay. And... I took the round and I found that everything was uh, done nicely. But in, in the evening, I went to the polling stations to find out whether the polling, polling parties has reached or not. I found that uh, many pol polling parties were missing. They were not uh, at the polling station. So I asked my driver who was a local. He told me that uh, I'll take you up to a place where you will find them. So I said, okay, let us go. We went to, you know, pubs. And we found that many of the polling personnel were drunk and were just lying there. Okay. And, and, and polling material was just by the side. Uh -huh. That kind of thing. So I immediately reported to the uh, UN agency there 
and uh, requested that uh, here tempers are very high because all the uh, you know those who were not uh, allowed to vote earlier uh, africans they were standing outside the polling station since last evening oh the black africans yeah okay it making, was the first time that they were casting yeah. their votes so making and campfire yeah. enjoying food everything because they thought it's a historic election yeah, for tomorrow them tomorrow you have to vote yes and tomorrow these people will not be there oh. and there will be no voting so there may be a serious law and order problem okay so please send uh, new political uh, polling parties so that i can ensure that uh, in these polling stations because the number was so large around 100 where were in you one in area. Uh, south africa i was in transkei okay yeah and uh. that area belong to nelson mandela ah uh. yeah okay so they said ki even we if we send new poll- polling parties uh-huh. by helicopters it will take at least a day mm. so by tomorrow evening you will get so i had to make an announcement to all these uh, reveling people that please enjoy have more food have <laughs> this yeah. because you have to do it for two days yeah and only the third day you will have polling they said nothing nothing doing we don't worry <laughs> we, we we are going to vote okay and in fact there was a personal experience because i was staying in a property yeah where the host mm. uh, the owner was very kind to me because i was a vegetarian mm. and finding vegetarian food in south africa was very tricky mm-hmm. even uh, beef they will say vegetarian burger you can eat but there are indians there right like uh, so very indian food nahi mil raha tha aapko in rural area it is very difficult it's like difficult right sky you can you know, okay. nobody even uh, would know english okay so they were taking good care of me they were huh. getting from their kitchen garden mm. some vegetables some greens and cooking mm. because they were maybe they were hopeful of some favor Mm-hmm. from the observer okay so the, on the day of poll mm. when you know third day the polling finished uh, the lady of the house mm. had good uh, spread that day okay and she blurted out huh. mr rawat hopefully we are winning and mm. i uh, foolishly actually blurted huh. out that you are 15% and i don't think you will get even 15% vote oh and you know next morning breakfast was all prawns and fish <laughs> and <laughs> nothing it was nothing your to, fault i guess uh, for, as far as she was concerned i immediately left that property went to another hotel and <laughs> oh my goodness so even that kind of thing happens okay so uh, do uh, election commission officers and the chief election commissioner uh, do you guys come under threat by political parties because the opposition now is alleging that the election commission is totally politicized so could you tell me about this uh it is uh, like a wrestling match going on and uh, referee getting the beating from both the wrestlers it is uh, that kind of situation uh election commission is always fair without any pressure and they take every decision in a manner that even up to supreme court those decisions are upheld because election commissions every decision goes up to the supreme court every decision so they just cannot afford to yield under any pressure mm. however it's human psychology that people feel that since we have appointed we may seek some favor from them but it doesn't really happen mm. wherever the rules laws uh, permit any discretion maybe somebody uh, who is uh, amenable to tho- those kind of adjustments may use that discretion in favor of them otherwise no i have seen that mr amit shah was barred from campaigning for 3 days mm-hmm. by the election commission during congress regime uh, even when important minister kalpnath rai i remember when i was observer he was uh, house arrest put under house arrest for rest of the campaign period because of some violation that is election commission's decision uh, in west bengal right hand man of uh, the chief minister had mandal was put under surveillance that one sdm 
and a retinue of 12 policemen will always accompany him wherever he goes because uh, he should not be permitted to do anything which is wrong. All those decisions are of uh, election commission. Therefore, it can be said, and in fact it is recognized world over, that election commission of India, uh, they deliver free, fair and credible election without uh, succumbing to any kind of pressure. And in fact, in that electoral integrity project, election commission's score out of 100 is uh, more than 80. So that shows that people worldwide have that kind of uh, faith in the conduct of elections by Election Commission of India. Why are there three election commissioners? And that is Mr. T. N. Session's time when 1990 to 1993, uh, the government of the day, they felt that uh, he is uh, being too uh, sort of nosy and too fussy about even small little uh, violations they decided to bring in two more election commissioners and uh, amending the rules that uh, decisions in the election commission will be taken either unanimously or by majority vote. Mm. So those two uh, who were brought in uh, could always uh, stymie the decisions of the chief election commissioner because he is one. So those kind of arrangements were put in place in 1993 and since it is going on that way, but I think that has added more value to the decisions of the election commission. Because my personal experience uh, in those uh, four years when I was there, uh, I realized that because of the distribution of money in one particular constituency, you know, 89 crores in one legislative assembly constituency was distributed in election commissions, flying squad and uh, surveillance Which year team. was this? This was in 17. Okay. 2017. 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, caught the evidence and law is silent law was there that uh, booth capturing you can cancel the poll and uh, have the repoll mm -hmm. uh, but for vitiation of at atmosphere by money distribution there is no law election commission felt that there is a ruling uh, of the supreme court that whenever there is a challenge before the election commission in conduct of free and fair elections Chief Election Commission is not supposed to pray to the God to give powers to deal with that challenge. Whatever he does within the existing legal framework, mm. that becomes the law. So that ruling we used and we countermanded that election. That since 89 crores have been distributed in this small legislative assembly constituency, we feel that atmosphere is not uh, ripe for uh, holding the poll, so we countermand the poll. But that's the extreme step, right? Countermanding a poll. Yeah, Nobody wants step. to do that, yeah. but you have to do it. And, and there was a lot of hue and cry and they went up to the Supreme Court, but our decision was upheld by the Supreme Court. Okay. But next time, because you have to conduct election within six months, hmm. Next time when the election was conducted uh, in that constituency, and that was single because it was not general election then. Mm. So mm, we found that there was no money distribution, nothing. Our flying squad and the surveillance teams were empty-handed. So we were really mm, surprised as to how come this is uh, this way, mm. so different. But the candidate... Uh, who was uh, instrumental, we can't say with uh, evidence or anything, but the candidate instrumental then won by a record margin, beating the record of the most popular chief minister of that state. Won by that kind of margin. Then in personal capacity, we tried to find out from local people whenever we visited there, ki what happened? Mm. Without evidence, we got to know that the candidate told the electors that from the date of notification till the declaration of result, election commission's jurisdiction is there. So we will not be distributing anything. You can have, <laughs> you can have a token. Huh. If you have five votes, token for five, like that. And any polling is token for five means five means if in your family huh. five there, there are five votes huh. so uh, we will give you a token of uh, five that you have five votes five votes okay and if from your polling station i get one vote more than the opposing candidate only one vote more means i have got more votes hmm. you can exchange this token 
after you know everything is over and election commission is out yeah uh, multiply by 1000 and you can get that oh that happen so there is a loophole for every law i can say that political class is very innovative <laughs> so you have to be uh, on your toes and you have to also be innovative to catch all those things Correct. and election commission does it so uh, one blot would always be jammu kashmir isn't it that uh, inability to hold for decades free and fair polls in jammu and kashmir that would always be something of course it's a it's a conflict ridden state it had uh, foreign interference there are so many things which went wrong but the inability to hold free and fair elections for decades together in jammu kashmir would always be a blot on that isn't it on our democracy very true right very true but uh, the panchayat elections uh, were an example that even in jammu kashmir you can have a very peaceful election and uh, very high uh, participation rate and uh, the then office officers of the team were given prime minister award for that mm. so it is possible if if uh, the election commission makes up uh, their mind and they are permitted to go ahead with the elections i think it can be uh, achieved in uh, conclusion sir i just want to ask you that uh, for 2024 elections uh, when you look at it that it's going to if you were an election commissioner would you look on it as something that brings about a number of challenges to hold free and fair polls in 2024 considering that there are so many threats uh, with regard to as you pointed out artificial intelligence social media uh, fake news uh, fake news checkers who could also be motivated all those things uh, you know which could be a challenge for 2024 in your view what is the single biggest challenge i personally feel that uh, single biggest challenge will be media issue mm. uh, fake news deep fakes uh, correct assassination by such uh, communication this will be the biggest challenge before the election commission because uh, during that election period the jurisdiction of all the courts is barred not even supreme court can interfere so mm. election commission is the only uh, forum for adjudication of all grievances and in such a short period if uh, you cannot uh, deliver then things will be wrong but election commission has brought in a very good application it is called c vigil citizen vigilance mm. giving policing um, authority to the common man if you download that application on your mobile it becomes active only after the not- date of notification mm-hmm. suppose in madhya pradesh you have that uh, application on your mobile and you are trying to use now you won't be able to use it but the day notification for madhya pradesh polls is issued it becomes active and wherever you see anything wrong happening wherever a citizen sees anything wrong, wrong happening, happening they can report it no they can just take a photo or a video hmm. and push a submit button they okay. don't have to they don't no, have to go to a police station no numbers no numbers no officer nothing they have to do nothing except for taking a video or a photo of that wrong happening and submit it will go in the inbox of all those who are responsible in that constituency and they can verify because it is geo tagged and okay. election commission has given the instructions that as soon as you receive a complaint on c uh, vigil you have to verify you have to take action laws of fire make arrest make seizure and give the feedback to the complainant within 100 minutes 100 minutes and that is something which is really wonderful empowering of the common citizen and i found in last lok sabha election 142000 complaints came on c vigil hmm. and you know almost 80% of these complaints were found correct and action was taken and people lost uh, their uh, you know deposits or things like that Mm. those things happen earlier what used to happen this written application written complaint yeah. who's going to do it it's too much of so a hassle people no election commission did it They're spending huge amount of no, money no i mean to say citizens w- would not bother right mm. i mean like going to and seeing that mera naam to hai hi nahi mm. most people just go back home yeah that who's is that complain? is what happens yeah. and whatever complaints come mm. on verification uh, 90% plus were found uh, bogus 
mm. because uh, evidence was evaporated or something like that. Yeah. There was a time lap. Whereas here, geotagged evidence is come. Mm. You have a video or you have a photo. So nobody can deny that. So this application by election commission stands them in good stead. And even these deep fakes and other things can be traced and can, can be easily right. uh, okay. countered. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Rawat, for spending time with us and uh, helping us demystify the entire electoral process uh, for which India is uh, praised worldwide. But many of us have doubts about how things happen. So thank you for clarifying our doubts. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Your uh, probing questions were really uh, good and I could speak out everything. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much for watching this edition of ANI Podcast with Smita Prakash. Do like or subscribe on whichever channel you have seen this or heard this. Namaste. Jai Hind. Click here to watch the previous episodes.